infrastructure have lost property for uh, more than 150 billion American dollars. В будь-який момент часу Російська Федерація може зруйнувати будь-який об'єкт енергетичної інфраструктури. Environmental impacts of this war also extend beyond the borders of Ukraine, or especially neighboring countries. On the Black Sea. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro Atlantic Course. I'm your host, Maria Armanenko. Every successful Ukrainian counteroffensive is followed by Russia's intensified attacks on the critical infrastructure of Ukraine. Some might say that these are acts of revenge aimed to escalate in terror and panic among the Ukrainian society and decrease in its morale. Not only is Russia regularly conducting missile strikes on Ukraine's infrastructure facilities, but it's also planning large-scale cyber attacks on them, as well as those of Ukraine's allies, according to Ukraine's defense intelligence. If you want to find out more about this subject, then please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. Vasil Shevchenko is Ukraine's former acting Minister of Infrastructure. He explains the scale of the colossal damage inflicted on Ukraine's critical infrastructure. Let's take a look. Infrastructure have lost uh, uh, property for uh, more than 150 billion American dollars. Ukraine has uh, uh, six international airport but, and uh, runway in uh, all of these airports uh, have been uh, eliminated. Uh, and uh, uh, concerning uh, state back uh, railway company uh, i can uh, i can tell that uh, g company has uh, uh, lost uh, uh, their sh rolling stock uh, locomotives uh, uh, electricity net for more than uh, 3.6 uh, billion american dollars and uh, now is uh, working for transporting uh, Ukrainian goods uh, through European countries to seaports to provide uh, Ukrainian uh, partners uh, products, uh, first of all, uh, grain and, uh, and another type of uh, foods uh, Ukraine uh, provide in, uh, in our economy. And uh, I'd commented that uh, uh, we are limited uh, in uh, 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 public transport because uh, there are a lot of public transport have been lost uh, during this campaign or uh, were stolen by Russian troops uh, which uh, were pushed out from uh, uh, Ukraine territory at the Chernigiv direction and Suma direction and uh, the last battle uh, from the uh, Kharkiv direction uh, who were uh, uh, drived out from our territory. During this uh, six months, uh, Ukraine uh, has lost uh, more than 10 million uh, uh, square meters accommodations and uh, and uh, people who uh, decided to uh, replace in Ukraine uh, uh, now is located uh, in different regions and uh, uh, waiting for additional support for liberation their uh, homeland and uh, rebuilding uh, uh, their houses during uh, five uh, months. Five, five uh, months. Ukrainian seaports, uh, seaports uh, were blocked. Six of them, better to say, but uh, four of them were captured uh, by Russian uh, troops and uh, stopped uh, their activities. Uh, uh, because of occupation, and uh, <coughs> we have only. Uh, three walking seaports which provide 10% uh, 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 volume uh, we had uh, before the war it, and uh, it's really low uh, level uh, for foreign corporations including that uh, during the uh, uh, marine, uh, marine transport uh, 
Ukraine uh, provided 70, uh, 75% uh, business operations. And uh, 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 I'd say that uh, 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 automobile transport uh, took a lot of uh, responsibility for transporting uh, Ukrainian uh, goods to uh, European country, to uh, European countries' support, uh, to fulfill our obligations uh, uh, in uh, from, a United Nations frame, uh, framework and, uh, and other international organizations. As we inch closer to the heating season in Ukraine, the energy infrastructure remains under a particular threat of further Russian attacks. A series of Russia's recent bombings have confirmed that this aggressor country is not worried about leaving millions of Ukrainians without electricity, water and heat in this winter. Let's take a listen to what an energy expert from the Science and Technology Center Psycheia, Gennady Ryatsev, has to say about the damage already inflicted and future risks. In any moment of time, the Russian Federation can ruin any object of energy infrastructure. And this was confirmed without a doubt from the military point of view терористичними з, з точки зору будь-якої цивілізованої людини ударами по об'єктах критичної енергетичної інфраструктури. Впродовж воєнної, військового вторгнення Російської Федерації були зруйновані десятки великих теплових і гідроелектростанцій. Було пошкоджено сотні кілометрів, якщо не тисячі кілометрів, лінії електропередач, зруйновані сотні підстанцій, трансформаторних підстанцій. Але все це не призвело до руйнування системи енергопостачання в масштабах всієї держави. Об'єднана енергетична система України – продовжує працювати як єдине ціле, і навіть масовані атаки на північну підсистему цієї системи, які призвели до виходу з ладу найбільших об'єктів цієї системи, а саме Харківської ТЕЦ-5, Зміївської ТЕЦ і Кременчуцької ТЕЦ, вони не змогли порушити систему енергопостачання в регіоні на тривалий час. І вже через декілька годин енергопостачання в цій системі було відновлено. Let's hear more about this resilience of Ukraine's energy infrastructure from Volodymyr Omelchenko, the director of energy programs at Razumkov Center. Важко уявити, щоб якась ще країна в Європі могла б настільки надійно, незважаючи на величезні руйнації і електромереж, і генерації, витримати і в цілому успішно забезпечити більше 90% споживачів електричної енергії. І я думаю, що українська енергетична система при цьому не тільки забезпечує власних споживачів, але і ще є достатньо серйозним експортером електричної енергії до країн Європейського Союзу, Румунії, Польщі, Словаччини, а також до Молдови. І на сьогодні обсяги, обсяги експорту складають 300 мегаватт за потужністю, але Україна має потенціал експорту до 2,5 гігаватт за потужності України Європейського Союзу. Але щоб цей потенціал реалізувати, насамперед необхідно якомога швидкіше, щоб закінчилася війна і, і серйозні інвестиції в українську інфраструктуру, кооперація і більш значить, плідна інтеграція української енергетичної системи в систему Європейського Союзу. 
Finally, how did Russia's aggression in Ukraine impact the environment? Let's hear from Andrei Andrusevich, a senior analyst at the Ukrainian Environmental Think Tank Society and Environment. This war is, has brought devastating consequences for our country, for people, for economy, for infrastructure, for everything. These consequences also include environmental impacts, the immense effects on the nature, the effects on the uh, quality of the waters, rivers, and, and the uh, very functioning of some of the ecosystems. The, um, the Ministry of Environment of Ukraine, together with the State Environmental Inspectorate and other uh, responsible authorities, uh, set up a special coordination board in order to um, track, monitor uh, every uh, all possible um, cases of the hostilities impact on, on the environment and also to estimate in financial terms the damages. I think this process of documenting uh, the uh, various uh, instances of the environmental impact is very important for the uh, post-war period for claiming damages from Russia, who must pay for the restoration of the country and nature. In this context, the, I am pretty sure that, I'm absolutely sure that the post-war reconstruction of Ukraine must be green. It must uh, um, aim at building a climate neutral uh, future economy in Ukraine. It also needs to include a dimension of restoring the nature. Some of the um, affected areas are unlikely to be uh, restored as uh, at the first stages. Uh, for example, the uh, huge areas which are mined today, of course, they include roads, but they also include forests, they also include agricultural fields, they also include protected areas. And it is clear to me that, you know, the, the wild areas will remain uh, mined for decades because the agricultural areas, the human settlements, they will be the first ones to be demined. Now, the um, environmental impacts of this war also extend beyond the borders of Ukraine, uh, especially on neighboring countries, on the Black Sea, uh, which is uh, shared by, by, by several countries. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center and Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in Flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please subscribe to our channel, like and share this video. Glory to Ukraine!